It was the spring of 1897 when Robert Lee Dickey, owner of the local general store and the local undertaker, decided to plant several hundred acres of peach trees in the rolling landscape of Musella, Georgia. My grandfather uh, quit working for his father-in-law and came over and started a business in, uh, in Musella and he built, a, he built a general store and he, was, he got to be he applied and got to be the railroad agent uh, for the thing. And so he worked uh, at a general store, and of course, general store then supplied all the goods for uh, farmers who were working uh, around, and then they collected in the fall when they ginned the cotton. And uh, my grandfather, uh, he opened a funeral home in Musella. Musella was quite a m little metropolis back then, and uh, he, he decided that he would plant some peach trees. And he planted his first peach trees in 1897. And he planted, of course, the Alberta had uh, been originated in Marshallville by uh, Mr. Rump, and uh, he ordered some peach trees and planted them and he, he shipped his first peaches in 1900. It takes three years for, for me, when you plant a young peach tree, it takes three years before you uh, get a crop to ship and he shipped his first peaches to, uh, to New York and evidently he had good success. But it was not Robert Lee Dickey I alone who wrote the family story. The succeeding generations have all had their hands in peaches and hope to well into the future. When Robert Lee Dickey I passed, he left the farm in the very capable hands of his grandson, Robert Lee Dickey II. He died in 1969, uh, and then I, I took over. Uh, of course, his, his son, my father, uh, came to work, and uh, he, my father was, he didn't like farming for, for, for some reason. He, when he graduated from school, he, he went to Macon and went to work. He uh, sold automobiles, and uh, he opened a store called uh, Dickey Auto Supply Company that was there, and of course, then the Depression came, and of course, he, they had to move back to the country and he went to work in the store for my grandfather and uh, oh, he did the bookkeeping for Dickey Farms. But uh, my grandfather was the, was the farmer. I mean, he, he knew how to grow crops and, and, and whatnot. And of course, I, uh, I had come along by that time and uh, ever since I was five, six years old, I rode with my grandfather nearly every day uh, when school was in section. Or, and then after school, we would go look at the peach trees and we would look at the cotton and we would look at the pine trees and, and whatnot. And uh, myself and my grandfather, we had great rapport. As a boy, Robert's ingenuity impressed his grandfather, once inventing a sundial in the upstairs of the packing house. The manager of the, was running the packing house and he had a watch, and I would call him down there, and I said, Mr. Yeah, what time is it? And he would tell me the time, and uh, he'd got a nuisance. He said, I, uh, I got hungry, and uh, I was thing, or tired, and I called up. He said, don't call me anymore what, uh, about the time. And so, <clears throat> and I, I didn't. I rigged up me a where the shadows, I took a nail, and where the shadow was at 12 o'clock, I, dr I drove a nail. And where the uh, shadow was at, at 12.15, I drove a nail. And where the shadow was at 12.30, uh, I drove a nail. And I quit asking the time, and they said, uh, Bob, what, uh, why aren't you asking what time it is? And I said, well, I can tell I, I took them up and showed them where the nails were, and they, they thought that, uh, my, my granddaddy thought that was remarkable that I had uh, uh, rigged up a, a, a clock or, or rigged up a sundial uh, to tell the time during peach season. And uh, so 
I got credit for that anyway. By 1940, peaches had grown into a commodity Middle Georgia was eager to market. It was the latter days of the Great Depression, and peaches knew nothing of the outside world. They held strong while most folks struggled to hang on. The fruit made princes and paupers of many men, and the Dickies worked hard to compete among Georgia's new royalty, the peach farmers. Marketing peaches has always been a creative task. In the early 50s, getting fresh peaches as far north as possible required some high-flying techniques. Let me, I'll tell you a story that happened with Paul. I had this very energetic sales manager back in 1947 or 48, and uh, he had a very good customer in, in uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and we, we were shipping all the peaches by rail at that time, and the uh, uh, airlines were just beginning to fly passengers and fly some uh, very expensive freight and everything. And, uh, my sales manager and the, his receiver in Boston at that time, they devised a scheme to sell more peaches in Boston. I mean, we had a tremendous big crop of peaches in that year. And uh, they devised, they said, uh, uh, advertising scheme that they put in the papers in, in Boston is that uh, buy peaches today that were on the tree yesterday. And uh, that was quite a hit. Well, uh, I've got some pictures and everything of us taking a few bushels of peaches to Atlanta to the airport, loading them on the on, a, on an airplane to go to Boston, which which we did, and they uh, uh, unloaded them in Boston and took some pictures of the uh, peaches being unloaded in Boston and delivering them to the uh, uh, supermarkets up there, and. Uh, it was quite what we had shipped, eight or 10 railroad cars of peaches up there the four or five days before where the peaches were there and they had plenty of peaches. We didn't ship but about 10 bushels by air and we'd ship 10,000 bushels <laughs> by rail and they sold them all as, uh, uh, in the supermarkets as uh, on the tree yesterday and in the supermarket today. So that, that, that was, that all the news media in the country picked it up and ran that story for a long, long, long time. The days during World War II are fascinating memories for Robert II, known as Mr. Bob around the farm today. Hey, Mr. Bobby. How you doing? They trained uh, uh, British flies. I mean, uh, prior to World War II, they had, uh, they sent some British uh, boys over here to, to learn to fly the fighters. And one uh, uh, crash landed up in, in one of our fields. Uh, it didn't hurt him. I mean, he, he had motor trouble and cut off the motor, glided down and, uh, and uh, landed in one of the uh, hay fields that uh, we were getting ready to plant peach trees in the next year. During World War II, labor was just, you couldn't get labor. We use uh, well, migrant labor now. We use we get it from Mexico. We we use the uh, legal H two A workers that come. But back in uh, for two years in World War Two, I think it was forty three and forty four. Is that uh, we used uh, prisoners of war? They they had a big uh, prisoner of war uh, camp. Uh, in Macon out at uh, Camp Wheeler, which was a training base, but it was also, uh, uh, they had uh, World War uh, uh, prisoners of war. And they brought them, uh, you, you contracted with the, the government to, to bring them and they worked, they, they wouldn't let them pick peaches, but they worked in the back of the house. And uh, uh, some of the growers, I remember Bateman and Company, and one they had a one Benton Brothers up in Monticello and all, and I don't know whether Pearson's used any or not. Well, I think Mr. Duke did, but anyway, the the Germans uh, were sort of arrogant, and and they weren't as good a workers. But we were assigned Italians, 
and they were the best workers you ever saw in your life. And I never will forget, oh, oh, five, six years after World War II, had this man come to my office up there, and he, he spoke, uh, well, he had immigrated back to the, uh, they, he had, he'd been reparated back to Italy, and then he applied for, uh, to come to the United States, and he, he spoke a little English. I mean, he, had, he was learning English, and he came and said, Mr. Dickey says, I wanted to come see Musella again, says, I worked for you when I was an Italian prisoner of war, or uh, uh, doing, uh, uh, doing 44. And uh, says, uh, and uh, he said, I've come back, and he said, I'm working to be a United States citizen, and he says, uh, I think you made me want to become one. <laughs> as Robert grew from boyhood to manhood, his role as a prince among peaches became more clearly defined. Georgia as a whole was proud of their peach farmers, and their influence on the local economy was greatly respected. In 1948, Robert met and married Jane Mobley. She went to Wesleyan College, and uh, I... Uh, met her at, at, uh, at, at Westland and uh, uh, we had uh, we decided to get married and uh, so uh, I, I think my family just turned me over to Jane she, she'd been a mighty good she'd been a mighty good wife uh, all along but i uh, uh, tell you some funny we uh, telephones uh, back then were sort of <coughs> primitive in Musella uh, we, we had the old Box style phone that you uh, uh, you turn the uh, turn the handle to ring and everybody uh, in Musella from Musella to Roberta was on a party line and uh, you had rings and our ring was three long rings and the next person was one long one short and one long I mean but uh, anyway we had this telephone operator who lived in Roberta and. Her name was Ms. Wadsworth, and Ms. Oh, I was dating Jane, and of course they only had one phone on in each dormitory at uh, at Westland, and uh, uh, I would call Jane and ask her to go out until I'd pick her up at six o'clock Saturday night or something, and uh, never could get her. <laughs> and, I, and I'd tell Ms. Wadsworth, I said, Ms. Wadsworth, I, I'm busy. Keep trying to get Jane and. Finally, she would try. She finally got her and said she'd be ready when you picked her up. I was a senior at Wesleyan, and uh, he was a friend of my good friends. So that's how we finally got together. But I went out with him a couple of times, and we had a nice time, and we liked each other. So then he took me up to meet his grandfather, and I liked him very much, too. That was his grandfather, Neil that he took me to meet, and so I liked him very much. And uh, my mother and father liked Bob, and we got along very well. So that's how we met, and uh, with our friends Elizabeth and Wilbur Tucker. They were our friends that he used to take us up on his boat way up yonder Lake Juliet, I think it was, or somewhere up there. But we used to have a very good time on the boat on the afternoons and whatnot. Well, we got together and uh, married, and we, we've been married 65 years. And it, it's, it's been 65 wonderful years. And uh, I hope we can keep it up for another, I, I would love to keep it up for another 65 years. In 1953, Robert was born, and soon Margie. Robert Lee Dickey III, carrying on the family namesake, begun with a promise to General Robert E. Lee himself. My grandfather uh, uh, was born in 1870, and uh, he, his father was with General Lee when he surrendered at Appomattox. Uh, my great grandfather, and my grandfather, I mean my great grandfather, told General Lee, said I'm going home, and I'm gonna name my 
Og først morgen så han ikke at sige her, og, og lady waiting for him to, to marry him when he came, but he said, I'm going to uh, name my first born son uh, uh, Robert E. Lee Dickey. Growing up for the Dickey children was a spectacular farm life, nurturing the fruit that caused the heart of Georgia to blossom and enjoying the last of the early days of peaches, when most peaches were still shipped by railroad. It was a lot of fun. A lot of went on in Musella, uh, with uh, revolved around our uh, packing house and around the store and around the cotton gin. Of course, we had the train track. Uh, train came through every day, so it was just a lot of activity going on in, in this little community, and it was just, uh, and we were the center of it. One of the things that I really remember is how quickly they could split a train and add a car. It wasn't like the car just went on the end. The train pulled through, they split the train, backed it up, got the car peaches, backed it up again, and the train was gone. It was just truly amazing um, what the, the engineers of the trains could, could do back then. Since I could walk, um, I was eating the peaches and being immersed in the culture of the farm and packing the peaches and selling the peaches and it really is um, something that I have thoroughly carried with me my whole life of just that small town um, homey feeling of uh, Mizella. I can remember it was only about one year but I was the only child left in Musella. And when I got home from kindergarten at lunchtime, there was nobody else to play with. So I went to work with Daddy after lunch every day. And he would save up all the fun stuff to do until I got home. <laughs> and uh, we you would go feed the cows. And lots of times we'd ride back to Roberta and go to the bank. And he was a great dad. He, he was fun to be with. And um, I think one of the things I remember is all the trips to Florida. We stopped at every sideshow there was, from the alligators to the snakes to everything that that was on the way to Florida and on the way back, mainly I think because he wanted to do it. Mom and Dad were great about uh, having, letting me and encouraging me to invite friends over to play, so we were always having a football game or a baseball game in the side yard, riding a pony and later the horse or the go-karts. and. Trampoline was a big part of my growing up. My dad always was was buying buying things for us, and uh, Christmas was a, was a huge deal for our family, and uh, it was always over the top uh, things that uh, he bought. I think he grew up that same way. I, I think my grandfather did the same thing to to, to my dad. So it was just uh, um, Christmas was was a time when you got all these big toys and, and it was just, it was great. Farm's been here for 114 years producing peaches. Right, exactly right. Where would you like to see it in another 114? <laughs> I wish I could see it then, I, I, but uh, I, I hope they're still producing peaches. Pe people like peaches. You know, pe uh, peaches are one of the favorite food, fruits that pe people like. I mean, of course, uh, they don't buy as many uh, peaches as they do apples or bananas, but uh, uh, people generally like peaches and uh, you know peaches started out in Georgia uh, uh, as, and got to the markets in, in, in New York and New England uh, is the first fruits of the season and, and uh, that's what made people like peaches. And it's fresh off the tree and real good. 